A car with a brain on the St. Bonaventure campus showed students exactly how harmful it can be to have a few drinks, then get behind the wheel. St. Bonaventure students had the chance to get up close and personal with the reality of drunk driving. LEG Enterprises brought Stop Loss, a DUI simulated vehicle, for students to try. The participants donned glasses that showed a virtual driving course, complete with pedestrians, a construction site, and other traffic. Students drove the virtual course as if they had a blood alcohol content of .081, just above the legal driving limit. St. Bonaventure officials say they hope the simulator will teach students to make smarter decisions. I hope the students get out of it. It's sort of a realization of what really happens when they're drinking um, and how much that their, their physical abilities to, to operate a vehicle are impaired um, so that they can actually see when they're sober what happens when they're drunk, uh, some of the, the real life examples of why they shouldn't be driving while they're intoxicated. Getting a job is tough these days, but at St. Bonaventure, the university's career center is helping students get one-on-one -on -one interviews with companies that might hire them. Maggie Bontemps reports. The St. Bonaventure Career Center, located on the second floor of the Riley Center, is making an effort to help students secure jobs and internships. The center also facilitates uh, a variety of job fairs throughout the academic year. We every year have on our own campus Career Fest, which is St. Bonaventure University exclusive, where we bring employers to campus to meet and dialogue with our students. We also partner with all of the colleges and universities in Western New York, and that partnership results in a shared job fair. This year the job fair will be in November, Job Quest, and it will be held in Buffalo. The Career Center is holding several on-campus recruiting sessions where companies come to St. Bonaventure and interview students who are qualified for the positions they are seeking. Even if students don't get the position, they take away valuable interviewing experience. The Career Center is also hosting various job fairs where students have the opportunity to pass out resumes and socialize with potential employers. I have attended a couple of the Career Center things. I, I went and mingled with some of the accountants and I gave my resume to um, a bunch of the people that attended the Career Center events. I find it very helpful. I think that getting my name out there and getting my resume in their hands is a lot better than just doing it after graduation. For more information regarding upcoming events, go to the Career Center in room 216. Eligible by the A-10 conference. According to a survey from the National Association of Colleges and Employers, just 19.7% of 2009 graduates who applied for a job actually have one. The night of Tuesday the 22nd, 11 cars were broken into on the St. Bonaventure University campus. Some of the cars that were broken into had things stolen, while others were trashed and vandalized. Everything that used to be in my glove compartment and in the middle console was all over the back of my seat, all over the front of my seat, and I immediately checked to see if my insurance and my registration were both still there, and they were. And then I found my GPS, and they, whoever did it didn't take my GPS, so I was fortunate with that. Thankfully, I didn't have any damage to my car, but I know a lot of people who did, and they went to go get estimates, and the estimates that they got were in the thousands of dollars. State police have been on campus to investigate, and St. Bonaventure Security Services has doubled its patrol. The only in Allegheny community has more than just Division I athletics to pay attention to this fall. The athletic careers of the Bonaventure men's basketball team went from high school hardwood to the Riley Center Arena. But for some students, there's a lesser known option. Intramural sports. You've got to get out of your room. You've got to get involved. It's, you know, intramural is a great way to meet people, great way to burn off some stress. I play intramural because in high school I played three sports and here I don't play any except intramural and it gives me something to do. Uh, it's just fun. It keeps you active during the school year. Something to do, basically keeps you in shape. A little bit of friendly competition. Students like Weber play in murals, not because they're an easy way to pass the time, but because they allow them the chance to flex their competitive muscles in a fun way. This fall's flag football league has already proven to be competitive. And they want to make their imprint uh, here on the uh, on the school and on the flag football uh, history. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say this is just a little, little more than just your average pickup game. Little fights almost start, and then you know people calm down a little bit. Beneath that competitive edge lies the camaraderie that connects these students to each other and to the thousands of alumni who have been tackled on this turf.
Hits like that one can be found every Monday and Wednesday at 4 and 5 p.m. Here's a quick look at the past week in sports from CNN. With Headline Sports, I'm Ray for Weigel. Will Venable drove in four runs to help the Padres beat the NL wildcard leading Rockies 6-3. Venable hit his 12th home run of the season, had a bases loaded double to drive in three more. Padres snapped the Rockies' three-game winning streak. Meanwhile, the San Francisco Giants picked up a game in the NL wildcard race after beating the Diamondbacks 5-2. Juan Uribe homered and drove in three runs to lead the way. San Francisco is now just four games back in the wildcard race with ten games remaining. And the Braves also gained some ground in the wildcard race in the National League with a 5-2 win over the Mets. Adam LaRoche and Kelly Johnson each drove in a couple of runs for Atlanta as they sweep the three-game series and are four games behind the Rockies with ten games left. And more news out of Atlanta as skipper Bobby Cox has decided to call it a career. The four-time manager of the year will step down after the 2010 season. Cox has spent the past 20 seasons in Atlanta where he guided the Braves to 14 consecutive playoff appearances, including a World Series title in 1995. Once retired, Cox will spend the next five seasons as a Braves consultant in baseball operations. And the Marlins kept their playoff hopes alive with a 7-6 win over the NL East leading Phillies. Florida scored two runs at the bottom of the ninth off of closer Brad Lidge, who blew another save. Red Carroll's pinch hit single drove in the game winner. Marlins are four and a half games back at the NL wildcard race. And the richest man in Russia has a deal to buy a controlling interest in the NBA's New Jersey Nets, that being Mikhail Prokhorov. The deal seems to suggest the Nets will be heading to Brooklyn. And the NFL has fined Cowboys offensive tackle Flozell Adams $12,500 for kicking two Giants defenders in Sunday's loss to New York. Adams was flagged for kicking Justin Tuck in the second quarter, and he did it again to OCU Minora in the fourth quarter, but was not flagged. Adams has been fined in both Cowboys games this season. And that's Headline Sports. I'm Ray for Weigel. That's all for this week's edition of SBU TV. Until next week, I'm Charlie Specht. I'm Christy Andrzejewski. For all of us here in the Coop Lab, thanks for watching.